when I ride. And the one precaution that I always take, that's my helmet. The second gear I always grab, well, that's gonna be my gloves. But the third and only other essential is this. And it's a neck gaiter that we designed ourselves. And this is the story of why. If you're not riding with a scarf of some sort, you're doing it wrong. Look to the aces. All nationalities, all generations, all wearing scarves. A phenomenon explained in the academically acclaimed 2006 documentary, Flyboys. It is not just to make you look good for the girls, but to keep your neck from being irritated from the constant turning to spot enemy aircraft. Well, any conscientious motorcyclist should be relentlessly head checking for bogeys, so I asked my wife to knit the prototype. Ridden the old yak through hell. Come out to the coast, go for a rip, have a few laughs. The bike will think about going faster. Ooh. I'm sweating like capitalist pig. I can't believe the difference this makes. I'm often underdressed when shoot one is warmer than shoot two since I can't change clothes for continuity. But this scarf well, keeps me cozy and chafe free no matter how nautical it gets. Okay, one more. Cool. I can't believe The second shittiest thing about shoot days is having to take my helmet on and off 99 times. I haven't been stripped this raw since my bris. If only the gator were less bulky and more stretchy. So I fired my wife and Gen 2 becomes stretch knit microfiber. But now I have a new problem. Divorce? No. See, uh, True North shoot days, there's 17 hours of pure sun. I actually burnt my neck through the loose material. So Gen 3 gets a UPF 50 plus solar backing, the maximum for fabrics. I say that like I didn't just discover fabrics have solar ratings at all. I'd have thought pink and purple would be enough to discourage a redneck, but alas. Back to black. At this point, I realize I'm not a product engineer because what I've actually designed is a heat absorber on the outside and a heat reflector on the inside. A thermos, essentially, wrapped around my jugular. So Gen 4 turns white, reflecting the sun back to car drivers, adding the bonus of visibility. Gen 4 also becomes quick wicking. As warm as it is in winter, soaking the gator now makes an evaporative cooler for the main pipes in summer. Everyone in the office gets addicted to riding in these tubes. I once retraced 20 minutes because I forget my home and it's that nice to ride with. But a few videos ago, we stumble into another refinement. Turns out CO2 levels in motorcycle helmets peak at 1500 parts per million. Dropping up to 50% of your brain's ability to use information and strategize. CO2 also slows motion perception. And say you're cruising at 120 kilometers an hour when a confused old man wanders into the street. Well, the vision to brain optic lag is 50 milliseconds. Reaction time adds another 200. So you'll be 8.3 meters closer before you even begin to dodge grandpa. If you were sitting at a traffic light before, then the CO2 exposure can double that distance, meaning you might kill the President of the United States. But our solution is free. Yank the neck curtain out of your helmet, and CO2 concentration halves. Of course, that makes for a chilly face, which is why Gator Gen 5 becomes long. Forming a full barrier from nose to nips takes the sting out of my January commute better than a neck curtain anyway. And because the barrier sits taut against my mouth, I breathe through it. And there's no contained volume to trap CO2. This gator does six jobs, but to be candid, it's nothing fancy. We have no crack team of goblins knitting them from unicorn pubes. They're just scarves made by a scarf company to our annoyingly frequent criteria. 
But I think we've perfected this simple piece of riding gear, so we printed a small batch and we'll sell them until they're gone. And click the link below if you're quick and keen and have $22. Otherwise, just find something like this. Because if you're not riding with a scarf of some sort, you're doing it wrong.